Hello fellow gregarious geeks and gamers, and welcome to this solo playthrough of Neanderthal, a game by Phil Eklund and published by Sierra Mandra Games. We'll be playing solo today, in which we have to basically run all three different types of peoples here, Vocal Archaic, Cro-Magnon, and Neanderthal, and the end game is to develop at least two of these into a tribal state and have at least one domestic animal each ready to go to win the game. That is the win condition. And we'll be doing our best to get there. Here we have our north and south hunting biomes where we'll be hunting for all sorts of creatures. Here we have Archaic Man, Cro-Magnon, and Neanderthal. Here we have our vocabulary that's available, and I'll do my best to explain this extremely complex game as we proceed. To be clear, Archaic Man in this game is a promiscuous peoples. Cro-Magnon are a harem-holding peoples, and, Volk and Neanderthal are a pair-bonding society. So we'll be doing our absolute best to explain everything as we go, but... Uh, this game, if you kind of know the rules already, you need to need to catch up on things. This might be the way to go to watch the game be played through again, but I'm sure we will make mistakes. So do not take this and just this as the only way to learn the game because you will probably learn it wrong. But we'll do our best here. So in this game, we go through essentially 10 turns. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It could get longer. It could get shorter depending on the... Uh, it couldn't get shorter. It could get longer, depending on the uh, cards that come out. And every turn follows basically three steps over here. And I will quickly point these out for you. Basically, we're going to be doing the event and daughter auction, hunter assignment. We do attacks and gathering. We roll for the hunt. And then a portal or Neolexia action. We don't need to pay attention to those colored actions quite yet. So let's get started with the first action of the first turn, which is the event phase. At this point, we're gonna grab an event card, flip it round and place that right there to see what the event is. The first thing the event shows us is the turn order for the game. I know this is currently showing not green. <laughs> it should be showing as green, but I am using a green screen. So uh, unfortunately, it might just be disappeared and just be a hollow little hole there, but it should be green, red, and yellow. What that means is that we should be going green, red, and yellow. So we take this little arrow and we point it in the direction. So if it was green, red, yellow, we'd go this way. If it was green, yellow, red, we'd go this way. I don't know if that's what the game intended, but that's what I do, and it makes it very clear to know the order. So in this case, it is a green, red, yellow, so we'll be going in this direction. The next thing that happens is we resolve the event phase as, uh, as they occur. The first thing listed over here is global cooling, where ice covers the northern biomes. So over here, we're gonna take a look at which card has the lowest climax value. And I believe that's the Irish elk. And the uh, climax value is this little number right there. And being a two, it was the lowest number in the northern biome. Basically, the Irish elk get pushed south, pushing out the oh so easy to hunt chamois, which we're going to certainly miss. And what has pushed them out? Global cooling. So we have an ice sheet that occurs over there, it doesn't get flipped over. And basically we have some glaciation or freezing happening in the north, pushing species to the south, and that pushes other species that are in the south biome out of the game. The next uh, thing to pay attention to is that next thing, which is elder die off. So basically in this, uh, we, we roll dice for every elder that we roll one dice for each tribe, in this case, two dice for each tribe, one dice for each skull, I apologize. So this will be two dice for each type of peoples to see which elders have survived. And in this game, we've only just started the starting setup. We currently just have three elders, uh, one for each of them, and they're not even mature elders, but they are elders whatsoever, and they are num elder number six, the uh, flint fire starter. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to roll dice, and we're going to see if uh, any of these... Uh, so basically we just we want to see if any of them die. And if we roll a six, that's going to die. So we'll start with Vocal Archaic Man. That's a three and a four. He's fine. We're going to follow player order to Macro Magnon. A two and a six, unfortunately. Vocal Crow Magnon has lost their elder before the game even starts. And this black disc goes back to their available vocabulary. And then Neanderthal over here. We're going to roll. And another six. That could not have gone worse. We're going to put them here in their dead pools and add this black token to their available vocabulary. So next, we go to the next section, which is a chaos incident. And first we check if there's chaos immunity. For chaos immunity, we basically have to have l equal to or less available tribesmen than we have vocabulary disks. So currently we have six and we have seven, so they're safe. Six and well more than six. Six and well more than six, so there is no chaos event that happens. Um, and to be clear, we're counting this versus the total number of discs. So six dudes, a lot more than six tokens. Um, next, we check what we have. And this is the last event here is a blizzard. And the blizzard says that we remove our choice of dependents that we cannot support. To determine if we can support, uh, people we have to support are elders and unmarried daughters. And we have to have two unassigned tribesmen for each of those. We currently only have a single elder between all three, and there's more than two available unassigned tribesmen, so there is no blizzard action. So that is the end of this event phase. So we now actually flip that over, and we now enter what is called the culture auction. So in this game, daughters are what provide development in these types of people. So all forms of culture and growth comes from our daughters, whereas the men are all busy hunting and trying to figure out who's the, you know, manliest man. Um, the, in this case, we have a very powerful card called the Matriarch. And the base cost for this Matriarch is one yellow disc, one orange disc, and one black disc. So that's incredibly expensive and going to be very hard to get into play. This is unfortunate for me. <laughs> uh, but what it does do for us is it says that during phase three, which is the uh, attacks and gathering phase, it says you can become a gathering species. At the moment, the only species that is gathering is the promiscuous, uh, the promiscuous um, uh, society. So you can see over here, it says under promiscuous may gather. So that means no other one gather so it would be best for the matriarch to go to somebody other than archaic man because he already has the ability to gather um and it will help to develop some orange uh vocabulary discs in the venus category which both of these societies could use so i can't really decide which one to go to but i know um well usually there's a bid that happens at this point but we don't really need to do that. It also has a special ability called Conversion, in which it says, if this card is married to an alpha, convert to tribal. That is an incredibly powerful situation. So we get an alpha by developing either the Napper, the Warrior, or the Trapper, and then we can bring our big dude onto the board, and our big dude is the alpha. Uh, but to marry an alpha means you're giving up an alpha. Um, so the problem with this being you're giving up an alpha, which means you're giving up a lot of ability in terms of hunting, but it could take you to tribal state, which is one of the two things we need to accomplish in this game. So a uh, very interesting first card to come up. I kind of wish it hadn't. In any case, we're going to marry it off to... Um, let's just, just go for Cro-Magnon. You know what? We'll go for Neanderthal. That is the name of the game. And we're going to bid the minimum bid amount, which is one of each type of disc. The amount that you bid is what it takes to mature. So we have to remove these discs to mature this character. So this daughter is going to take a while to mature, but then she will become the matriarch of our Neanderthal society. 
The next step we have to do after event and the daughter auction is the hunter assignment. And we do that in player order. So we want to look at what we need to remove. We definitely need vocal archaic man is looking to mature his fire starter. So he's looking to remove a black disc. Vocal ne uh, Neanderthal is looking to, he can, he can remove a black disc using an action later on. So an orange or a white or ideally both. But when we're looking at hunting, we also want to look at predators. You can see there's a predator in the north. That's the big red symbol in the top right. And there is one in the south as well with the cave hyena. That means any species that has this tiny little red line on the on the edge of it, if they do any, if they get hunted, they attract predators. And I don't feel like we're quite ready to fight off predators just yet. So I'm going to try to minimize. So I'm trying to look at this fallow deer, arctic flounder, the carcass, and the string winding. I'm not quite ready to fight hyenas and lions and shit. <laughs> so let's look at what we need. Um, that orange token, this could be great for Neanderthal because of that orange disc removal over there, which would really help take us towards getting this matriarch removed. Um, the removal of this black disc over here would be fantastic for vocal archaic man. I keep saying vocal, just archaic man. Now, what we're going to do here is we can also assign in this phase, not just hunters, but potential husbands. This person is not mature. So there's a rule in the game saying if it's not mature, it's an automatic failure. So we're not looking to get a husband, but you could usually do husbands. You could set up elders and you can set up, of course, um, uh, hunting expeditions. So for, for, for Volcar Archaic Man, we're going to take a look at... Um, we cannot currently develop any of these. To develop a trapper, you need to have a white... one of each colored disc adjacent to this nature white domain of the brain. For the same for warrior, you need to have one of each color disc adjacent to this orange section. And for black, the same, the uh, technical domain. Currently, we only have a white disc touching the black and the white sections of the brain. Each one of these can hold one of each color. So white and black, black and orange, orange and white in this one. So you can have six discs. That is, in fact, how we become a tribal society. In a solo game, you need to get all six of those portal discs onto a character to become a tribal society. And uh, that's very hard. So right now we can't really create a napper, a warrior, or a trapper because we don't have, you know, enough of any of these. So what we're going to do is we are going to send this little asterisk over here. Let me show you these cards. So let me show you an example of the fallow deer. So this card over here shows you basically what we're looking at. This is fallow deer this is the kind of hunting it is um that little spear just means that if we had a trapper we would have a better chance with an alpha of hunting it and we'll deal with that when that comes it says we need to get two rewards two two successes that star in the dice means a one or a two on a roll and we get three babies and we get to remove an orange disc from somewhere if we get three of the same number, we must take this as a trophy. So I think for sure I want Neanderthal to, to go after the fallow deer. So um, he's probably going to send everyone there. So for now, Vocal Archaic Men is looking at this, but they only need a single one or two. So I feel like we can probably go to multiple places, but I'm trying to feel like what the benefit is going to be of going to these multiple places. And uh, I don't know. Let's let's send four over here, and then. Uh, hmm. You know what? Let's just send everybody here because I want to show you how this works. Now for Cro-Magnon, Cro-Magnon is definitely going to set someone up to be a elder. So we're going to put them like this to show that they're not yet mature. Um. And they also are looking for a black disc removal. Unfortunately, everything that has a black disc removal is kind of difficult to deal with. So actually, let's give Cro-Magnon the easier option and send all six to hunt this red deer for, for, for Archaic Man. But if they do succeed, they will have to deal with the cave hyena, but we can get to show you what 
dealing with a predator is like. And then everyone else from Cro-Magnon will come string winding. And then for Neanderthal, we will send everybody to hunt the fallow deer. Excellent. The next phase here is attacks. There are no attacks because none of my people are competing against each other. So now we go into gathering. And oh, that was even better than I expected. The one gathering society, archaic man who's promiscuous, does get together because that little green symbol over there, that that symbol right there, that would mean that I can gather from this location. So we're going to go ahead and gather. And what gathering does is give you a single baby that can be added to your population. And we're going to add that to vocal archaic man's population. Nobody else can gather. So we go into the next phase, which is rolling for the hunt. And we'll go in turn order again. So we'll start with the red deer. And we've got five six over here which means we get to roll six dice one two three four that's seven okay six dice here they are and we're going to be trying to get we need the prerequisite right here it says we need to get a single we need to have a single white token in our vocabulary well we have two so we can do this hunting and we're looking for two ones and twos and seeing what's happening from that point. All right. Whoa. All right, we have... Whoa. I think I used up all my successes on the first turn. We have three ones, two twos, and a four. So that is a success. So with that success, that means we will get three babies. We have to hold on. We have to make sure we survive the predator attack. So I'm just going to put them all sort of like nearby just to remember three babies and a removal of a black disc and a white disc so we would also remove this assuming we can successfully fend off the predator and to fend off the predator what happens is we have to move these guys onto the nearest predator which is the cave hyena in the same biome and we do an attack and in the same same procedure but in this case we only need one basically if we get the success we also kill the cave hyena if we get these two ones you can see that unlike the red deer which has the asterisk the cave hyena has black dice with ones on them so we need actual ones to succeed at this one um, if we successfully do at least one success basically we don't get the cave hyena but you know he might do some damage and, you know, but that's fine. We got our red deer. But if we don't get a single success, then the cave hyena steals our red deer, meaning we lose all that stuff that we gained. Fascinating. So over here, you can see we got two ones, a two, a five, a three, and a three. So what does this all mean? Well, let's take a look at cave hyena. I'm going to bring that closer. First of all, on any fives or sixes, we lose people. So we rolled one five. And that means one of our guys is dead and goes to the dead pool over here. Next, it says, did we get two ones? And in fact, we did, which is extremely surprising to me. <laughs> we got two ones. And I believe... So it means we actually kill this cave hyena, which is, I can't, I was not expecting. That. <laughs> so we actually gain an additional three babies from this. Oh my, we're definitely going to have some issues next turn with overpopulation. Boy. Okay. So three more babies and we get to remove two more black tokens. Well, we don't have any, but we have successfully done this one. So all these babies that are going to come into our peoples because of, oh my goodness, we gained seven babies that round. So we more than doubled our population because of how successful our hunting was and how serendipitous that ended up being. So these guys all get to come home, only one casualty. So now we're looking at a really um, fruitful society, but as you remember from last turn, there were some things about having a large population and a vocabulary big enough 
and promiscuous folk don't have a large vocabulary to begin with. So anyway, let's keep uh, following up what we have over here. Three more babies, two more black tokens. We, only, we have nothing to remove. Now it says, did we roll three of a kind? And we did not. So we do not take this as a trophy. And so Cave Hyena returns to the biome. And that's the first archaic man hunting. Oh my goodness. We now go to Cro-Magnon, who's got five people over here going for string winding. So we're going to roll five dice. Five dice for string winding. We just need a single one or two. Oh, sorry. All right. So that makes for a one, a two, a four, a five, a seven, and then five. So that's fine. So we've succeeded. We can remove this black token. And we now have a mature fire starter. And what the fire starter does is it lets us go into places where there would be frostbite, which are places with this little blue token at the top. Here's a close up of that blue token. And we are basically risk free from, from frostbite because we have a dude that can start fire for us. Um, but they also let us do cost free elder promotions, which means in the future when we set up elders, we don't need to put a, to put a, marker underneath them they just become elders straight away and that's always fantastic it also um, protects our elders during chaos so usually during chaos we didn't have, we, we were all immune from chaos in the first turn but usually we would lose half our tribe folk and an elder and in this case basically this guy will protect that elder that one elder so that was successful we've successfully done this and i believe with string winding um, we immediately get this into our hand, which is a technology that we can later play called uh, Cordage Snares. And it's basically something that's going to help us when we become a tribal society. Your hand is equal to the number of elders that you have. So now Vocal Archaic Men will have a single card in their hand, which I can just keep down here to remind us that it's available. Um, he has a hand size of one and a single card. Sorry. Uh, hand size of one because one elder and one card in that hand um all right so let's do vote let's do neanderthal neanderthal is going to go for six dice here and they need two ones or twos and there we go a one a two a three four five and six that is an incredible role ladies and gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> Gals, pals, non-binary pals. This is the most ridiculous roll I've ever seen. Anyway, so first thing that we resolve, we have the success. We gain three babies. Excellent. We will add the three babies. And notice that the fallow deer is not a uh, does not attract predators. So we don't need to worry about that. Um, and then we will remove an orange token so we will start to mature our matriarch these guys can all come home now we did not get three of a kind so we do not have to take this trophy into our hand which is good because over hunting early is a problem if we did take a trophy we would not replace it but because we took this as a technology and not a trophy we will replace this token this over here and we have the european ass okay great so the next step we skip the domestic animals phase because we can't domesticate any animals at the moment. So we go into the next phase, which is the portal or Neolexia phase. This is where daughters and brains and elders all affect each other. In this case, local or cake man cannot do anything. Neither can Cro-Magnon. However, Neanderthal can, but he will use an action because they have one black vocabulary disc in their brain. They can remove one vocab black disc from either an elder or a daughter. And in this case, obviously, we'll be doing the daughter. So uh, the, our matriarch is almost fully mature at this point. Hopefully next round we can hunt something with white and get her fully mature so that we can start gaining the benefits of this. However, uh, Vol Neanderthal is a pair bonding um, society, which if you look over here, says that our daughter's abilities are inactive until they marry. So we're going to look at marrying them off, maybe to an alpha. We'll see when the time comes. So I'm just going to return that. 
And then that would take us basically through a turn. So what we did there was neolexia, which is where we used something in our brain already to mature something else. The other way would have been a portal action. So if we had a white token somewhere and we had, um, uh, sorry, that's not the way. To look. So if, if, if the matriarch was mature and, and fully mature, in this case, she wouldn't be unless she was married, but it says we could add an orange token to the Venus. So the portal action would have been doing that and adding the orange token to the Venus portal over here. But we did the Neolexia. And again, you can do one or the other. And we remove this black token from our daughter, leading her towards maturity. And that would be the first full turn of Neanderthal. Another day, another turn. Welcome back to Neanderthal. Second turn. Let's go. First thing that happens is we draw an event. And this time, we have the turn order over here being red, green, yellow. Following our system, we go down red and we point it towards the green. So we know that it goes red, green, yellow. Next, we do the events in question. The first one of which is, again, some more global cooling. That's unfortunate. Let's take a look at the numbers at the top. And the lowest number is this predator over here. So as you can see again, this predator has that number 12 on it. That's the lowest climax number. So this predator is going to get pushed down and push out the European S that just showed up. And that's going to go out and then again get covered with ice. Oof, looks like we have a very cold game ahead of us. Next, we do Elder Die-Off. Same thing as last time. So what we're going to do is grab two dice, one for each of those skulls, and roll those for each of these two, sorry, these two tribes because this one doesn't have an elder so there's no elder die off so we start with red and here we go two and a three only a six would kill an elder so red is fine and now we do the same for our cake man and oh goodness gracious we have a death so well our cake man has lost their fire starter and that's the end of the second action, which is Elder Die Off. And now we enter Blizzard again, where we have to check if anyone, uh, any dependents cannot be taken care of. All right. Well, if you look over here, there are no dependents. Over here, we have a single dependent, but we have more than two hunts, uh, more than two unassigned tribesmen, so that's fine. And here we have an unmarried daughter, which is one dependent, but we have more than two unassigned tribesmen, so the matriarch is fine. So that's the end of that event phase. So now we flip it around for the culture at auction. And here we have Fashion Woman. Basically, it says on here that Fashion Woman, during phase two, which is the hunter assignment, gets to steal back all wanderlust hunters of your color, co-located on a biome with your hunters. So basically, if you lose hunters that end up going to various tribes, you can end up going to those places and stealing them back. I feel like that's a little more useful in a competitive game, but it could be useful if we're close with one, one uh, species to get to the end of it, to get to a tribe and we need those hunters back. That could be very useful. And it can help development in the um, shaman domain, orange and both orange and white vocabulary discs over there. The cost is just a black and a white, so it's slightly cheaper than the matriarch. So we're going to decide now who's going to get this. And with development of, you see, cro Magnum already has an orange disc in that social, in the um, shaman section. So there's limited benefit to him, but there would be great benefit over here with vocal archaic men. Plus there's already a white disc in the brain. So using Neolexia, we would be able to get rid of one of the two maturity discs that go on there. So I think we're gonna give Fashion Woman to Vocal Archaic Man, and then we place the minimum bid on it. And there we go. So that's the end of the daughter auction. Next, we go to the Hunter Assignment. In this case, we start with Cro-Magnon Man, and Cro-Magnon is looking to get some development going on over here. But what development? <laughs> um, 
Hmm. It, he really needs babies. I think this species over here needs babies because they're really short on people. And ideally, since there are now two um, of these uh, predators in the south biome, ideally not something that's going to attract a predator. So where can we get babies? Well, we see over here we can get three babies without triggering uh, any predators. And that might be the way to go. Um, yeah, I think we're going to do that. So all his guys are going to go, all their guys over here are going to go to the fallow deer and try to hunt the fallow deer. When it comes to our cake, man, he's got a lot of people that he might lose next turn. So you might as well make use of them. And what I'm thinking, I don't know if you can pull off the woolly mammoth, <laughs> but it certainly would be something. I think, I think they want to create a fire starter. So they're going to assign one fire starter over here. And remember, the fire starter is the only one of the elders that doesn't have a requirement in terms of brain development. So that's why we're always starting with the fire starter. Um, so ideally, if we could get a black disc or a couple black discs, that would be great. Woolly Mammoth would be incredible again, but we would lose a lot of people, which might not be the end of the world if we get the Woolly Mammoth but it would attract the cave lion. So the question is, could we handle both the woolly mammoth and cave lion in terms of losses? Part of me wants to say yes, <laughs> but the smarter part of me wants to say no. Um, the Irish elk would be an excellent choice and that would attract the cave hyena. And, and for last time we accidentally killed the cave hyena, so maybe the hyena won't mess with us, but um, maybe that's the way to go. Don't forget they can gather so the red deer also has some value to them. Because I, I like the idea of the white and the black discs, because they need to remove black, white, black. And they can remove one white. So most important is to remove the two black discs. So the hyena itself might be a good option, because they could gather, and they could potentially take it out, get three babies. Yeah, I think they're going to do that. I think... Mm, but I don't think they need everybody. They only need two ones. So I'm thinking we could send... Let's make use of this massive population boom over here. So let's send eight people to deal with the cave hyena. Because the cave hyena, if we take it out, won't attract the scimitar cat because it is a predator. It's not a, a big game that attracts a predator. Then we can send three people up north to do some carcass. This is a kind of a low risk thing we have going on over here. All I'll really need, I can't really lose anyone and I would just need a single one or two. So let's let's do that. And then for Neanderthal, they want to remove that white disc. So they want to pick something that removes white discs. And the best option would be the red deer or the Irish elk. Probably the red deer because there's no danger. But what I will do Actually, I want to move a black and a white disc because let's get start. Let's start Neanderthal and getting his elder as well, his uh, fire starter. So I'm focused now on black and white discs, and the the red deer can get rid of both of those. And I think that's where they're going to go. Um, if green plays first, depending on what happens with cave hyena, we'll see who's going to. Ah, uh, let's live a little. I don't want to spend too much time thinking. That's six, and that's eight. This game is really hard to play on camera, i just like to point out. <laughs> All right, so that's that. We're now going into gathering. And the only species that can gather, because remember, Matriarch is not yet mature, is Archaic Men, because they're promiscuous. And because of that, they are in a gathering space, that green thing over there, so they will gain one baby, which will be added to the population. Next, we're rolling for the hunt, and we start with the red player, because it goes in turn order, and we're going to start, the red player is going to roll five dice, and they need two ones or twos. That's it. There's no, di oh, sorry about that. One, two, two, four, six. Lovely. That's a success. And... With the success, they gain three babies. All right. And 
they get to remove an orange disc, which isn't useful for them quite yet because they have nothing to mature. But what they were really prioritizing was having um, a boost in their population. Next, we go to Woke Archaic Man, and he's going to decide between the two. Let's start with the easier option first. And with this three, they need a single one or two to get a baby and remove a white disc. So let's roll that. Four, four, six. That's a fail. But there are no casualties. So with the four, four, and six, um, no casualties. Ooh, actually, sorry. They could not have come here because the prerequisite for hunting this carcass is to have two black discs in your vocabulary. An archaic man just has the one. So in fact, perhaps we can say they would have gone to Arctic Flounder. Then with that six that they rolled, I'm just trying to do the quickest fix. They would lose somebody to Frostbite because they don't have a mature fire starter. And they would still fail, and then these two would come back. So, that's that. And now we deal with the Cave Hyena. In this case, we're rolling eight dice. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they need two ones. And I'm going to place this here because I can't actually hold all the dice in one hand. All right. One, 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 two, two, three, two. Sorry. Three and five and five. So what does that mean? Well, on a five or six, they lose a person, which means we lose two people. So two of these have been lost in the hunt. But we did get three ones, which means we succeed in getting three more babies. So that's the people we lost, plus a little extra. And we get to remove two black discs, which was the ultimate goal of this. So we're going to remove this disc. Ironically, they can now hunt for a carcass. And we're going to, oops, and we're going to mature the fire starter. There we go. Great. The next thing that we check is, did we get three of any kind? In fact, we did, which usually is fine. And in this case, I would still argue is fine because it's a predator, but you must take it into your hand as a trophy in a um, two-player game. In a, so, so, sorry, solo game. So that trophy mark over there just means you take it as a trophy, which is great. It's worth points at the end of the game. However, it means that spot does not get filled up again because you're over hunting the region that's what it means thematically so it's kind of a good thing because it was a predator but it means that that spot is now empty and nothing is going to fill it up so we have fewer options in, a th in our uh, situation so i'm going to take this and slide this right there taking it into our hand as a trophy we now enter vocal neanderthal so vocal ne I mean, neanderthal is going to roll Six, eight dice. This is four, four. Again, I'm not going to be able to hold them all in one hand, so here we go. And they need just a one and a two, and they do have the prerequisite of one white disc. Six, six, one, two, two, one. I can't do this kind of stuff. Okay. One, one. That's one. One, one, two, two. Three, four, six, six. So they succeed. So they gain three babies. And they get to remove a black disc and a white disc, which is kind of perfect. So we're going to put these three over here. These guys are all going to return home after successfully hunting the red. Oh, wait, are they? Sorry, we gained three babies. But these, these, this, these rewards are kind of being held in escrow at the moment because we do attract a predator. So, um, also this black disc and white disc can be removed, but we need to double check. I'm going to move them off to the side like this, just to remember. But we need to double check that we can survive the scimitar cat. The rules say that a predator can hop a gap, but not an ice sheet. Currently, the only thing stopping the scimitar cat from attacking is a gap. So all these gents over here are going to have to go to the scimitar cat. And remember, we need a, we need just one one to succeed at this. But every five or six will kill us. If we don't get a single one, 
we will lose everything that we gained. It will steal our red deer. All right, that's a 1-1-1. One, one, one. Oh my goodness, I'm being so lucky on the rolls. Okay, 3-3. Three, three. So that's three ones, one, two, two threes, and two fours. Which means I didn't even get any casualties, which is insane. Because you get casualties on a five or a six. So let's go over what happens here with the scimitar cap. Essentially, no casualties from the five or six. I did get two ones. I got three ones, actually. So it means I gain an additional three babies. I don't understand how I'm so lucky on the rolls this time. And we can remove an additional two black tokens, which we don't have a use for. Let's return everyone. I'll uh, organize these later, maybe. Okay. Okay. Uh, we remove these two tokens as per the initial reward from the red deer. And did we have four of any one kind? Uh, the answer is no. So the scimitar cat does not get taken in as a trophy and it returns to its place in the southern biome. Excellent. So we do have a fire starter and an almost mature matriarch. For everyone else, that matriarch would already be mature. But for Neanderthal... Uh, because they are a pair bonding society. Sorry, let me just finish this off. My OCD getting the better of me, as usual. If you take a look right here, it says your daughter's abilities and portal actions are inactive until she marries. So that is the one downside I find with pair bonding. Is uh, I, I think it's a very powerful sexuality card. But I do think it's a, you just, you got to marry them off before you can really get anything done. And with this matriarch, marrying them off to an alpha really matters, but I don't have an alpha left. So what I might do is marry them off early, just not to get that special conversion ability, which if you remember, lets you become a tribal state, a uh, tribal society. But I might marry them off just to gain the benefit of that Venus disc in uh, the orange disc in the venus thing and then once i get an alpha challenge and basically challenge the whoever's married to this matriarch to take the alpha um excellent so we're now done with rolling for the hunt we now go to portal or neolexia actions over here there is no portal or neolexia oh, sorry this is a mature elder now there is no portal oh i'm sorry i've been marking them the other way There's no portal or neolexia happening with Cro-Magnon because there's no discs to mature. In case of Archaic Man, you can use neolexia to mature Fashion Woman. And unlike the case of the sexuality card of pair bonding, Fashion Woman is now mature, which means we can gain the benefit of that orange and white thing, as well as this action in phase two, which is where we assign our hunters, which is really cool. So you, hopefully you'll see a portal action come into play next turn when Archaic Man will start developing their Shaman portion of the brain with one of these two. And now we come to Neanderthal, and there is no portal or near Alexia that could happen. So we move on to the next turn of the game. And that was turn two of Neanderthal. Welcome back to turn three of Neanderthal. And now let's just crack on with the event. Here we have our... Turn sequence for the third game, it'll go yellow, green, red. So we grab this, point it that way, so we know it goes yellow, green, red. Next, we have three Elder Die-Off tokens. So, symbols rather. So we need to grab three dice, and each of these species has to roll three dice. Every species has an Elder at level six. That is the only one that will die. So we start with Neanderthal. And that is a dead elder. It's really hard to keep these guys alive. We go to green and no sixes. And we go to Cro-Magnon and no sixes. So only Neanderthal has been lost in that one. So what's next? Next, we follow this blizzard. And again, we need to check the number of dependents. We have one unmarried daughter and no elders. So we just need two. That's fine. We have one unmarried daughter and one elder, so we need four. One, two, three, four. Perfectly fine. And then over here, we have 
um, just one elder, so one, two. So that's perfectly fine. So we now move on to the culture auction. And we have a woman with a name. This person will give us, let us place orange and black discs into the Venus portal, which is this portal between the black and orange sections of the brain. And is basically worth two victory points at the end of the game. Well, I think it's pretty clear. I'm going to give this uh, daughter to um, Cro-Magnon. Reasoning being, he doesn't have a daughter yet, and we need to start developing his brain. His Venus portal is completely empty, so any development in the Venus portal will be useful for him. So that is what we're doing. Next. He also actually... I believe gets the most points for daughter points because over here is our end game scoring. And I'll give you a quick close up on this. You can see with promiscuous, the daughter scoring, which is right there, it's worth one point for each. Whereas with, and also with Neanderthal, the daughter scoring is also worth one point for each. But with uh, Cro-Magnon, which is harem holding, you'll see here that it's worth two points. So it's actually a very good decision, which uh, I accidentally made. <laughs> we now move on to Hunter assignments, and we start with yellow, and we see what we're going to do. So Neanderthal has a lot of people, and again, that woolly mammoth is always looking attractive, but I feel like if we send everyone there, we would have to deal with the cave lion, I think we could be okay. I think this might be one of the few opportunities we have to take down the woolly mammoth. Hmm. The problem is, what is the what are the real benefits we're looking for? The problem is right now with with Neanderthal, there's nothing we're really looking for. We definitely want to place one elder that we are developing. So we're gonna place that there. So we need to remove a black token, but even if we fail, we can use the Neolexia action to get rid of that. But it would be nice to use the portal action. So, yeah, you know what? Let's go for the mammoth. Let's send everyone there. It's one of the few opportunities we're going to have in this game to take down a mammoth. And a little bit of population culling never hurt anybody. Although, if we do win, we do get six new babies, so... Uh, that's 13 dice. I have, I think, oh man, I think we should split up. I think I'll send, I'll send nine, mm, 10 to the mammoth. And I think three might be enough to give a go for this Arctic, uh, flounder. Um, but ah, there's no benefit to that. What I'd really like to do is to take this card into my hand, but I would need three of a kind. So that's not likely to happen. I can't really see a good benefit here. Let's, let's give it a shot. There's no risk. Maybe we'll get lucky on this. Because if I can get three of a kind, I can take this um, invention into my hand, which might be useful in the future. So we've got 10 people hunting the woolly mammoth and three people going for this carcass. Next will be green and archaic man will is looking to, he's definitely, I mean, as things develop, he's not scared of frostbite anymore because he has a fire starter right now. And he's looking to, um, the, the, he's looking to get some Neolexia actions to develop this part of his brain, sorry, portal actions. So what does he actually want? Nothing really. So a bit of gathering would be good since he can use that ability. Maybe the Arctic flounder and the red deer. Um, yeah, that might work. So we'll send four to the Arctic flounder. And we will send everyone else, which is eight, to hunt the red deer. Some serious hunting happening in this game. Cro-Magnon, which has the smallest population, is looking to develop a woman with a name. And uh, using the, the Neolexia, they'll be able to get rid of this orange. So it's quite critical they get rid of this black so that next turn they can start gaining the benefit of a woman with that. Ooh! 
you know what I just realized? We need to get these people married as well. So, um, we'll take, rather than do this, we'll send everybody to the mem. Mm. We'll, we'll, set, we'll keep that. We'll send one person here to try to marry the matriarch. And the way that we do that is it's a hunt action like normal. And if they succeed, then we'll have a special action that we do. We'll have to mature the, uh, the husband. But we'll do that so we can start developing the Venus. And for him as well, we'll take out one of these and send them to marry. Oh, but he's promiscuous. He cannot get married. Interesting. This is fascinating. Okay, so let me walk you through what I'm thinking here. I want to get these two married off, but I'm thinking we could do some cross-border stuff, some cross-species stuff. So Neanderthal, since Volko Archaic Man, Archaic Man cannot place husbands, I'm thinking we send this husband to Archaic Man to try to court a fashion woman. This way, they both get the benefit of Fashion Woman and being able to develop the Shaman portion of the brain. And then, we'll put that face up, then we'll send, Archaic Man will do what Archaic Man did, but then Cro-Magnon will send someone to try to marry the Matriarch, which I might later challenge with the Alpha of Neanderthal if I need to upgrade my uh, species to a tribal state. And then everybody else will go somewhere where they can remove a black disc. I think that should be the priority here. Um, the problem again is dealing with uh, it's dealing with um, predators. Because even if we do get the Irish elk, which isn't easy, there's a predator that comes in. We'll need three successes here. Hmm. Well, it's kind of the disadvantage of going last, so... We're just going to give this a shot. Seven people are going to go try to hunt the Irish elk. All right, so this is what we're doing. So next, we check for attacks gathering. Again, only our cake man can gather at the moment, and he can gather in both places. So he'll gain two babies, which we'll place over here. Um, and then we enter the role for the hunt. So we start with the Neanderthal. Let's just get this one out of the way. Three dice. I need one success to gain a baby and remove a white disc. But what I truly want here is to get three of a kind. And obviously, I know the chances of that are next to none. But we'll give it a shot anyway. Two, three, six. No harm, no foul. We got one success, though, with that two because this is a one or a two. And we get a baby, and a white disc can be removed. We have no white disc to remove for Neanderthal, so that will be the end of that. Next, before we deal with the woolly mammoth, let's, actually, let's just do the mammoth, and then we'll deal with that. So this is going to be nine dice to try to take down the mammoth. So I'm just going to place this here because I have no space. All right. Oh my. Why am I so lucky all of a sudden? One, 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 two, three, three, six, six. So the first thing that we resolve is deaths. Uh, they will get deaths on sixes from Frostbite, and they don't have a mature fire starter. So unfortunately that means they will lose two of their population. Next, we'll deal with, uh, we had the prerequisite. We needed four of one kind to succeed, and somehow we got four ones. We got five successes, actually. Sorry, not four of one kind. So that's six babies. We can't get six babies. We only have five tokens. And again, we're going to get attacked by the cave lion. So we're going to kind of put these in escrow, as we've been calling them. And then remove three white discs, none of which are useful, and two black discs. So we will be able to mature this person, assuming we survive the cave lion. And then we got four of a kind, which means we would take it into our hand as a, um, as a trophy. And 
The interesting thing about that, remember this trophy, if you get four of one kind, is we take that whether or not the European cave lion successfully steals our prey, which means we overhunt it anyway. So we could end up in a really bad shape where we don't even have the mammoth as an option in the future. Um, and we didn't get anything out of this. So now we got a roll, but there's only seven people left. So let's grab the dice, place that back here. And roll seven dice. We need just a single one. All right. And we got it, but with a lot of casualties. So we have, wow. A one, a three, two fives, and three sixes. We lose people on a three, four, five, uh, or six, because technically this is not yet mature because this is an escrow, as I call it. So we lose one, two, three, four, five. We're losing six out of the seven people. Three from frostbite and three from this red damage over here. So one dude is going to come back and survive. Next, we check if we, we did not successfully defeat the cave lion. However, we got one success. And if you get one success, the lion is, gets hit and doesn't basically um, steal your prey. So we get, we don't get a new reward here, but this person comes back and all of these people come home. These new babies that we got from the woolly mammoth. And we successfully remove this black token which means that we uh, we have a successful hunt, but this is now empty, which means we're between ice and hunting. We're kind of really making it tough to go hunting as we go forward. Then the last hunting we need to deal with is this uh, fashion woman over here. So we roll a single dice and we basically need a one or a two. That's how this works. If it's a six, she clubs him on the head and kills him. If it's a one or a two, we successfully courted. Um, if you were marrying your own, it wouldn't be that risky, but I wanted to give this a shot. So we're going to go for a one or a two, and we get a six. So she kills them, and Fashion Woman remains unmarried. Her benefit will still work for vocal for our cake man because he's not pair bonding, so he doesn't have that secondary condition. But yeah, that was fascinating. All right, let's go to the next, which following this arrow is green. And let's get these out of the way. We got four dice over here. He is protected against frostbite because he does have a mature fire starter, which they now have a mature fire starter. So there's no harm, but they do need a one to get two babies and they get it. Ooh, that would have killed someone without the fire starter. But the fire starter does say, and I'm just going to point this out right now. It does say phase four, no ice damage, no frostbite. Excellent. So um, what happens? We successfully done this. We gain two babies and we can remove an orange disc. We have no orange disc to remove. So that's the end of that hunt phase. Um, next, we do the major hunting that Archaic Man is going to be doing, which is Eight dice against this red deer. So let's grab another four. Here we go. And we're going to be rolling. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, we're going to need one white, which we have two in our vocabulary. And we're going to be rolling. We need two ones or twos. And there we go. Plenty. Two, one, two, one, two. It's plenty. And there's no damage otherwise. So we've successfully done that, which would give us three babies and we only have one. We'll put that in escrow and we can develop, we can remove a black or a white token, which we don't have one to remove, but we will attract the scimitar cat. So we're going to move these over to scimitar. And now we're looking for at least one, one but we will die on fives and sixes. So let's see what happens. We got a one, but we got six, six, five. So we got four casualties and one success. So four casualties will kill off four of our folk right there. We don't successfully hunt the scimitar cat, but we did get us. We did get one, one. 
and that's enough to fend them off our rewards. So we gain this reward back, which is this baby, and we take these back and complete uh, Archaic Man's hunting. Next is Cro-Magnon. Cro-Magnon has two things to deal with. So first we have this Irish Elk, and we're going to roll seven dice for the Irish Elk. We need one, we have a white die here, a white uh, prerequisite, which we have four of those. And we need three successes, one success being a one or a two. And also uh, we are protected from Frostbite because we have a mature Firestarter. So we're protected from this. Uh, we're protected from the sixes being Frostbite. But we didn't succeed because that's one, two, three, three, four, five. So we only have two successes out of the three that we need. So we don't get this reward. Shame. We really wanted that one. That's like the only one we really needed. And we didn't get it. And we didn't get four of a kind, so we don't take it as a trophy. And I'm actually very grateful for that because uh, hunting is starting to look a little thin right now. Um, unfortunate. It would have been great to uh, mature a woman without a name a little bit faster. But lastly, we're going to be rolling for our marriage with the matriarch. And again, we need a one or a two to succeed. Um, here, I'll, I'll close up to show you guys what that looks like. Basically, the six, she clubs him on the head. A one or a two, success. So we're going to give this a shot and try to get a one or a two. Let's go. Hey, that's good. That was actually the more valuable one because we really needed Matriarch to be married to benefit Neanderthal, and now they'll benefit cro as well. So that's great. When they come from another place, you don't need to mature them. So they come and compete for the, the, the Matriarch or the daughter's love. And if they win, they get married, and that's awesome. If you sent one from your own tribe, you wouldn't have to uh, roll anything, but they would be immature. So you'd place like that, and you'd have to spend some time removing the orange disc. Um, and everyone is marked with an orange disc. So that's great. The matriarch is now married, which means her ability is activated for Neanderthal, and cro can gain some abilities from that. Fantastic. Um, so that was the end of the roll for hunt phase. We now go to the portal or Neolexia phase. We'll start with yellow. So Neanderthal can use the um, uh, gather phase. And what's amazing now is if you remember, Matriarch has this ability on here, which says during phase three, become a gathering species. And now since she's the daughter of the Neanderthal, but the but married into the cro everyone is a gathering species. So not because Volca Archaic was already promiscuous, which made him gathering. So now these two are gathering as well. So everyone can gather and get some babies whenever they need to. That's really great. But also... Um, he can use that action now to do what's called a portal action. Remember how Neolexia was, you look for something matching the brain and then remove it like a black token under a fire starter. In this case, it says we can add an orange token to the Venus portal. So we can add a v orange token here now to that Venus portal. And by doing that, we're developing the brain, which we need all six to become tribal. But also importantly, we're very close to be able to get both the warrior and the napper because now there's a black and orange touching both the 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 orange part of the brain and the black part of the brain so if we get a white token here and a white token here we can basically do both the warrior and the napper so that's a neolexia action and that was awesome we know a uh, portal action i'm sorry now we come over here to our cake man and he can use this because he doesn't have he doesn't need his daughters to be married to gain the benefits over here so orange and white, he can gain either an orange or a white disc to the shaman portion of the brain. And he's going to take an orange token. And the reason is um, he has fewer white tokens. And also we now have an orange and a white token touching the white section of the brain. So if we just get an, a black token up on the, on the um, bison portal, which is between the black and the white, we'll be able to start developing the trapper elder. So... Excellent. Another portal action. cro has not yet got a mature daughter. He could gain a portal action from the matriarch, but he, I think rather what he's going to do is try to mature a woman without a name, 
and using a Neolexia action, remove an orange token, which matches one in his brain, off of his brain. And so now, a woman without a name just has one token left on there before she is mature. So potentially next turn, he could start gaining Neolexia uh, portal actions from woman without a name or matriarch, depending on what he'd like to do. And that's the end of turn three of Neanderthal. All right, leaving off from where we last stopped, I found out while editing that I did make a mistake with this. I had overpaid. I paid an orange and a black for this instead of just an orange, which is what I wanted to pay, the minimum bid. So I'm returning this to my vocabulary as Cro-Magnon. And let's jump on with turn four. We first have a new event card. And first thing that we look at is the turn order, which is yellow, red, green. So we're just going to turn this round. And now we're going to start with the yellow to go red and green. Then we're going to take a look at what is happening in terms of the event phase. And the first one is the worm glacial. And what the worm glacial is, is we take another uh, event daughter card and add it to the bottom of the game deck. So basically, we're going to be taking a card from the extra daughter event cards in here and adding it to the game. So the game goes from being 10 turns to 11 turns. I'm just going to slide that into the bottom there. And lovely. Okay. And then the next thing that happens is, again, three dice elder die off because we can't get a break when it comes to Elder Die-Off. So I'm just going to get three dice. And we'll start with the yellow player. So we need basically anything but a six is good. Okay, no problem for Neanderthal. We'll now go to Cro-Magnon. Again, only a six is bad. Somehow, no issues with their fire starter. And then thirdly, Archaic Man. Wow, we got lucky. Two, two, and a three. Okay, excellent. So we got really lucky, and now we enter the daughter auction phase. And this is Shahrazad, who actually costs three, one of each color token. Um, but in phase six, which is the portal or Neolexia phase, she lets you do two actions. So you could do two Neolexias, two portals, one portal, one Neolexia. Or in the future, you could do two elder actions once you become tribal. So she's extremely powerful, I think. Because I think that's the key to the game is that phase. And she lets us develop white tokens in the um, bison or the shaman portions of the brain. If we look over here, Archaic Man has a white token in the shaman. So his benefit is the least of the three of them. And based on the current situations, I would say Neanderthal, hmm. I'm, I'm kind of between which of these two to give them to, so I'm trying to think, figure out who we can develop it quickest with. And I think it's Neanderthal, because we are going to have to remove one of each color token, and Neanderthal has an orange and a black token, so it gives us the greatest flexibility. So we're going to give Sherazad to Neanderthal for the minimum bid of one of each color. And there we go. Excellent. We now continue to the hunter assignment phase as always. So Sherazad, he Neanderthal wants to develop Sherazad if possible. So removing an, uh, the white token is the most critical part, but if he if they can remove a white plus a black or an orange, that would be even better. Um, when it comes to uh, Cro-Magnon, Cro-Magnon is probably going to look at marrying off their daughter. Um, and what else are they really thinking about? Well, that's the main thing, I think. Because they're going to start developing their brain this turn. Archaic Man um, can't marry, again, because they are promiscuous. So I think... They're going to be looking at, hmm, it's really hard to develop as the promiscuous people because you can see with Cro-Magnon, they've come over here to this matriarch. They can gain this benefit and develop their Venus portal with orange. 
Um, but because when you're promiscuous, you can't marry, it's really hard to develop the brain because you cannot gain the uh, benefits from other daughters, only your own. So they're probably going to look to get the white token and the um, shaman portion of the brain this turn. So I'm not sure what their main goal is here, but uh, let's, let's give it a shot. So we'll start with yellow. Um, I think yellow will again try to attempt a marriage to fashion woman. And I think that they're looking at orange and white or black. That's great for orange. Is there anything that gives us orange and white or black? No. So it would have to be two separate things. Here we're looking at two successes. So I think sending in, we have two, four, six, two, four, six, eight, nine. Yeah, we also have protection against ice, so that might be a good way to get an orange token because it's easier, I think. Um, and then they could get a white from here. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's send them all up to the to the northern uh, hemisphere here, and they're gonna send five to hunt the Arctic flounder, and four to hunt the carcass because um, it would be in good shape for them. They're basically at no risk. They have the prerequisite of two black tokens in their vocabulary, and they would need just a single one and a single one or two. And they would be able to get three babies and an orange and a white. Then they could develop that and proceed. Great. So what is Cro-Magnon doing? Cro-Magnon now is thinking about how they can develop. They can start using a woman with a name starting this turn, uh, which will help develop the Venus portal of the brain, which is great. Um, but what is their main goal? I think they're still looking to maximize their population growth as much as possible. So I think more than any of the others, they would really like to go for the fallow deer because the fallow deer will allow for a... Um, three population boost without having to face a predator and no danger. With that last person, they're going to marry it off him off to a woman without a name, if for nothing, just to show you how this works. And basically, you don't have to roll a dice, but it takes a turn to mature it. And because we already have an orange disc in the brain, we can use a Neolexia action to just mature this person. And actually we could use that fallow deer to mature this and then use the benefit of this, which we had anyway, to create a portal action and develop our brains. Vogel, um, Archaic Man, again, I don't know what his main goal in life is. I struggle really to play with uh, the uh, promiscuous side. I just wanted to make sure to show all of them. So I think definitely going to places with, with, um, What's it called? Gathering, place to their advantage, the red deer, cave lion, or the scimitar cat. And I'm just trying to think what their, their real target is here. They have protection against um, blue, which is um, ice, so um, frostbite. So the Irish elk or the alpine ibex, they could do that. And the alpine ibex, they, would, they need a white and an orange. They have it. They would get three babies and a white token. I'm not sure that's useful it might be useful if they end up you know like getting these three they could domesticate it and that might be worth it so since they're looking for two ones i'm going to try to send quite a few people there so three six i think nine people there and hmm I don't know. I'm just I'm just going to I'm just going to send everyone there because I can't think of a better action to do. Ah uh, no, let's not do that. 9 And then we'll send four people. Uh there's nowhere I really want to go. That's the problem. You know what? They're just they're not going to go anywhere. They're going to stay here. I mean, they might as well go here and just maximize my chances. Okay. What's next?
Well, next we roll for the hunt. Well, first there's gathering. Look at me, like an idiot. Sent them to a place they can't gather. God. Um, let's send them here to the red deer. I don't think they can succeed, but at the very least they can gather. And I don't think they'll successfully take out the red deer, so they won't attract a predator. So we're going to do the gathering, which is one baby, which we're going to add to the tribe. Next, nobody else can gather, I believe. Um, well, no. Remember, the matriarch, once married, gives Neanderthal the ability to become a gathering tribe. So Neanderthal did send some people. Sorry, I don't know if I moved that too quickly but you could see there and remember because they are pair bonding their daughters only become uh, effective their abilities only come into play once they're married but they are married so actually they will gain a baby as well from this arctic flounder spot because you can see they have a gathering spot right there okay now we start with rolling dice so we're going to start with yellow neanderthal and let's just go in order. So we're rolling four dice for the carcass, and we need one, one, or two. We got a one, two, two, three. So that's a success, which is one baby, which is uh, that little symbol. And we get to remove a white token. So we're going to remove this white token from Shahrazad. Uh, Shahrazad, as we say. And then these guys will successfully come home. I don't believe we rolled three of any one kind. We did not. So these guys will come home and we will not gain the technology, which is the uh, bone um, atlatl or whatever you call it. Um, uh, all right. Next, they will hunt the Arctic flounder, this time with five dice. And they need a single one. Four, four, five, two, two. So we failed on this one. So um, usually we would check for sixes for frostbite. We didn't have sixes, but it doesn't matter because we have a fire starter which protects from frostbite. We didn't get the one, so we don't get the baby, and we don't get to develop the orange token. That's a damn shame because that was really... I guess removing the white was the most critical because we do have an orange token there. But I'd love to get... Shares at mature so we can start to get these double actions. Anyway, let's keep going. Next, we go to red, and they sent... Oh, there's one more roll, sorry, for Neanderthal, which is trying to um, be with Fashion Woman. <laughs> so we need, again, a one or a two here. A six will kill him. A five. So nothing happens. He gets sent home, dejected. All right. What happens next? We go to... Red, Cro-Magnon, who has sent um, everybody, which is six of them, to, sh to hunt the fallow deer. We're going to grab six dice and roll it up here. And we got a one, one, two, two, three, six. So we have, we have four successes. We only need two, and we don't have three of any one kind. So... Basically, that means we succeed. We gain three um, Cro-Magnon babies. And then we also get to mature an orange disc. And we will mature woman, the husband of woman with a name. So now she is fully married. And then everybody will come back home because this is not... A big prey so it doesn't attract a predator and that's great because now that we have um sorry now that we have the um we don't have to worry about maturing the husband we can use that portal action to develop the venus portal of the brain um green the archaic man has sent nine people to hunt the albike alpine ibex so i'll grab nine dice i don't have hands for this so here we go. Oh boy. One, two. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So four ones, 
a two, a four, a five, no, it's a five, and two sixes. So first we check for sixes. Those are frostbite, um, but we do have the fire starter, which protects you against frostbite. We had the requirement to hunt against them, which was one white token, one orange token. We see if we have two ones, we did. So we gain three um, babies. So three new tribes members. And we get to remove a white token, which we don't have one to remove. But we did get four of a kind, which is great. Because now, other than these uh, gents coming uh, home, uh, we also get to bring this animal domesticated into our hand. That means once we reach a tribal state, we'll be able to domesticate our own alpine ibex. And that is one of the win conditions. Remember, we have to mature two tribes, um, two, two of these species into tribes, but also they have to have domestic animals. So we're going to flip that around, take that alpine ibex and put that into our hands. There we go. And because this was not a uh, trophy, we will flip over another thing, which is a cave bear. Lovely. Uh, now we got to roll those four dice. Let's take out a bunch of these. I kept the ones for luck. We're going to roll these guys and try to uh, get one or two. Oh, my God. One, one, two, six. I didn't mean to succeed. This is not going to end well, and I'll explain why. Well, the one, one gives us a success. So we would gain three babies and get to remove a black or a white token. But before getting those rewards, which we don't have anyway, um, this is a predator. So th this is a large species. So these guys get moved to the largest predator. Now, if we don't roll a single one, the scimitar cat will steal our prey. So we're going to give this a shot. And remember, fives and sixes will kill our people. So we rolled a four, four, three, and a five. So the five killed a person, because you can see five or six over here. But we didn't roll a single success. And because we didn't, they stole our prey. So these guys come back empty-handed. Okay. I kind of just wanted the deer, so I mean, that's fine. I don't think we gained an advantage there because we gained one baby and then lost one tribesman. So um, kind of pointless. Uh, it would have been better to just fail at that. So then we would have had a net increase of one in our tribe. But, you know, you live, you learn. Let's keep moving on to the next step, which is the portal or neolexia phase. We, so in this one, we're going to have to start to develop Mm, see, I have this benefit over here gives us an orange disc in uh, Venus, which is already there. So we don't have to do that. So, And and Shahrazad is not mature. So the better option is to start to mature Shahrazad so we can start to gain that benefit later on. So we'll remove the, what's more prevalent, orange or black? Probably black. So I will remove the orange disc the game I mean into our vocabulary and we just have one token left to mature Shahrazad um, Cro-Magnon we, well, now since the, they've already got a mature husband here will either gain an orange or a black token into their Venus portal and I'm going to go for black the reason is to have a better balance in our vocabulary over here but also because once we have a white token touching this uh, this section here we'll be able to start making a warrior, which is awesome. And then over here, Fashion Woman does, in fact, impact, and we get to place an orange or a white token in the, um, oh, sorry, in the Shaman portal. Since we already have an orange, we'll gain a white, and we can go ahead and place that white token right there. So this is uh, looking good. It's looking good. We're almost ready for a try. If we can just get a black token here, we can start to get a trapper. If we get a black token here, we can get a warrior. So that's really looking great. And yes, uh, that would be the end of that turn. And we will now enter turn five of the game.